speaker. So again, you know, come in closer, um, but I apologize if not everybody can hear. Um,
public health and safety, and no, he wasn't one of the Koch brothers. <laughs> we march today for John Snow, a British physician who, when there was a cholera outbreak in Soho, England, he dis discovered that it was coming from the Broad Street Prump, where people went to fill their buckets with water and their thermoses with water. That was the source of the cholera, and his his research and discovery led to epidemiology as we know it today. He went to cholera zones in the world to study cholera. We honor women scientists. We honor women scientists like Rachel Carson, like Lisa Meitner, like Rosalind Franklin. by male co-counterparts, co-researchers. Lise Meitner, who was one of the early scientists to discover nuclear fission, it was her co-researcher who won the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, Nobel Prize for Science, not the woman co-researcher. But her legacy lives with everybody who marches today, as does that of Marie Curie. <laughs> Caldecott, one of the founders of Physicians for Social Responsibility, of Mary Sanger, who was one of the inventors of birth control and We also honor and march in the memory of George Washington Carver, who overcame tremendous obstacles as the son of slaves who grew up in slavery to become one of the most contributing scientists to agriculture this nation has ever known. And Dr. Bernard Lown, who I had the honor of working with, a scientist, a cardiologist who invented the, car the cardioverter, but his most important contribution, and that recognized by the Nobel Peace Prize, was building the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, bringing Soviet and U.S. scientists, East European and West European. Palestinian and Israeli, Chinese and Korean, North and South, Taiwanese, Latin Americans, Africans, to a common table of awareness that where there's no scientific medical response to the threat of nuclear war, the only ethical commitment of a physician and of health workers and of society is to work for prevention. And that was the credo of the organization that was recognized by the Nobel Peace Committee, Dr. Bernard Lown, who used science to mobilize in the face of the threat of nuclear war a threat that is not gone, a threat that comes closer to us today. We have to look at the threats of climate change, the threat of nuclear war. The evil power is also the stimulus to bring our communities together in sisterhood and brotherhood throughout the world. Let us raise our voices with confidence and resolve as we demonstrate to Earth that Mother Earth is indeed strong and adaptive, but she is fragile and vulnerable at the same time. Let us dedicate ourselves to this Earth Day and this Science Day to raising an ongoing chorus of unity and purpose in the protection of our environment, our public health, and the spirit and soul of our human communities and planet Earth. Thank you.